Hi guys, having problems printing helmets on your K1 Max? Could be your slicer. So let's talk about it. Okay guys, so I just finished printing this gigantic halo helmet on the K1 Max. It's come straight off the printer. All I've done is connect to the two, the two, the top and the bottom, and these two little side bits on. So I haven't actually sanded it or done anything to it. As you can see, it's come out really well. I've just taken supports off. I do all my supports so they're on the inside. Nothing touches the outside. Also got this Blue Beetle one that I did not so long ago on the K1 Max. As you can see, it's come out really well. The finish on the outside is like fantastic. And this Spider-Man one, which you've probably seen before if you've been watching. Okay. I haven't done anything to them. This is just the um, red filament with some magnets on it. And um, I've just pulled it straight off the printer. Really hard to get it to do anything to it when you've got that sort of pattern on the um, on the helmet. So how did I get it to print? Because Creality Print is having problems printing these helmets. So what I've been using is a K1 Max um, profile that I got off um, Thingiverse. However... The latest Orca Slicer has the K1 Max profile included in it. So let's have a look at that. In Google, just do a search on Orca Slicer. And it will come up with this. It's on there, you can just go into the GitHub um, section, which is where most... Just scroll down to where it says GitHub release page, version 1.7 which is the very latest one as of the 3rd of October. And there you've got your Mac versions, your Linux version, and your Windows versions. Now in the Windows version, you see it's got an installer and a portable. So portable is it all runs out of the one folder, doesn't load anything on your, on your computer. The installer just loads it all and installs your little icon on the desktop and stuff. I tend to do, use a portable, that way I can just chuck it on a, 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 a disk and just, uh, well, not a disk, a USB, show my age. <laughs> and take it wherever I want. So just click on the portable one and it will download like a normal download does and come up in the corner here. So when that circle finishes all the way around to the top and it changes color, it's finished the download, in which case you can click on it. And then once you've got the program here, just right click on it and open in folder or show in folder I should say. You then get this window coming up and from there if you right click and drag it to wherever you want it to go so what we'll do is just I'll just close some windows down we're just going to chuck it on the desktop okay so I'm just going to right click and drag it and release and just go extract and it will come up with this, is this where you want to place it and all that sort of stuff. If you've dragged it in the right spot, you can just go extract. Okay, so once it's extracted, it will open it up. And this is the file you want, the orchestrators.exe. So if you just double click on that, it will open up Orca Slicer. So we'll do that. Virus protection and the, the Windows Defender on there will come up with this error message. Um, click on more info and then just run anyway. Okay, so when it opens up, you can come over to this cog, which is right up the top of your um, panel here in the prepare section. And just click on that cog. And it will come up with this window so <clears throat> basically if you've got some clip or some marlin profiles that you want to load on I sometimes load on some of my old marlin ones from here um, and if you've got the clipper um, file to define all your settings and stuff you can just do a default clipper one here but what we want is to scroll down so there's all your bamboo lab ones so I use um, this one here for my p1p and you've got all your different nozzle sizes as well but if you keep going down you've got all your Creality printers here and you do have the K1 and K1 Max here 
so if you click what nozzle I usually just load them all because at some stage I'll probably use I might not use 0.8 but you never know and at least it's there it's up to you whether you want to do it or not but just go confirm once you've checked them and you'll see that it is now in here so you can click on what nozzle you have and away you go creating um, your mass and stuff on the K1 Max. If you want to go in, you can go in here to that little notepad there and set some of the parameters. If you want to change any of the parameters, you can change them all in there. <coughs> you've got G code. If you want to put G code in, um, if, you want to, if you've got your own G code you want to run, you can chuck it in there. So that's where you just up, uh, set the printer stuff. And make sure the advanced tab's on, it gives you all the options. Okay, I always have the advanced tabs on. Even if some things I'm not sure about, if I see them then I go, hmm, wonder what that's about, at least it'll prompt me to go and look for it. Now the things I always do is, for one, I turn off this, um, right down the bottom in the quality one, I turn off this one wall on top surfaces, so then it loads whatever I've told it to load on the top surface, it doesn't just load one. So I turn that off, because that's always on a default. Okay, so from quality you go to strength, so in strength, I have the wall loops uh, start at three and go up. Don't usually go under three. Um, sometimes I go up to four, but three is usually the one I have as default for my helmets. I have the infill as 10. So I change that to 10. It keeps it nice and light, but still gives it a little bit of structure there. I don't worry about the speed. Speed's fine. Um, it doesn't need to slow down or speed up. It, I usually generate the speed by picking what um, what filament I'm going to use. So I'll get into that in a minute. Um, support. With support I always click enable support with, with helmets and I always do tree auto and tree slim. Now it'll come up with this little message here. You go yes. Then you want to scroll down because what it's done is change the Z distance to zero. I never have it at zero. It sort of melds the supports into the to the model so I have that at 0.28 and I have this one at 0.25 so some people say it has to be a derivative of of your layer size and all that sort of stuff however I have fiddled around with them and for some reason it makes a difference so I'm not going to argue with it I, that's what I found works and I can peel my helmets off the support inside the inside the printer Our supports are meant to come off so that's all I do with the support I just change them to make sure those two are there and tree and slim with the other I usually have the brim to auto and let, let the program sort out whether it wants to put a brim on or not now if there's if there's a lot of fiddly stuff and it's not touching the build plate really subtly I will change it to outer brim only but they're the only two I really use in the filament area all I've got are these three little settings here ignore that one that's one I've done myself so I'll show you how to do that so here these are the three default ones you get and it doesn't give you a big option but you can load your own just like I have up here and the reason I've done a lot of the bamboo ones is because if I pick a bamboo printer it will give me all the bamboo um, and all the generic they're basically everything you select in that list will give you okay but it won't let you do that with the um, K1s okay so what you need to do is create your own so what you can do is pick whichever filament you think closely resembles yours so if I'm let's say I'm using a PLA carbon fiber for instance like this one here but it's not a bamboo one I can get some of the settings off that because I know that the one that I use is fairly similar type thing most of them are similar to, sort of thing the quality is not the same but they should have the same sort of speed to print and if you click over here on this where it's where your filament is it'll give you all the settings for that filament so the things you want to be be aware of are the flow rate that's a big one and if you scroll down get that back on the screen your volume your maximum volume metric speed is another one okay so that's the speed it's it's telling the slicer to pump out the um the filament at so you want to take that and that. 
So the flow rate and the volumetric speed are the really important bits. You can have a look at some of these others if you want, but they're the main ones that you need to take note of. Um, you can go through all of these. You can set the cooling. So there, there's all the speeds and stuff you want to set. Um, some G-code. You want to set some G-code. It sets some parameters. Um, and some of the speeds. So just take note of them all. So, well, sometimes I just get your snippy tool, um, which is this little snippy tool here. Snippy tool, it's in your accessories or your windows, and that allows you to that allows you to go like this and just grab that screen and then you can save it on the little save button here. And you've got all your things, you can pull it up and just type all the, all the same settings in, yeah. So that's a lot of things what I do. So what I'll do is once I've got all those settings, I'll come back to my Creality one. I'll then come into say it's a lot one of them. I'll then come into little um, settings one here and say I want to save one and this is where I can say I'll just save it as um, what are we going to do? PLA PC wasn't it? PC call it Gary's <laughs> and you can't have a space it in there you go so I'll call it that and then you'll see it appears in my list and I will then go through and change all the settings to what the other ones were and then you've got that actual filament setting sitting in your Creality printer so that's how you get the filament settings into your Creality printer you make your own little filament um, profiles for it you can of course experiment with them but I found usually the, the bamboo ones are fairly good for most of the generic stuff. Um, I use them mainly on Sunlu. Sunlu, um, Sunlu filament is the main one I use, and the other one is Jo Pet G. That seems to work okay with the bamboo Pet G range, and all the rest are either they're either Creality filament, bamboo filament, or Sunlu filament. I found all of them work really well and give me really good results. But try it with whatever, whatever film you've got, and you can you can then fiddle with the the cooling factors, the speed, and all that sort of stuff of your filament just by going in and editing your own little um, profile that you've created. Okay, so the other thing I've printed is um, this Captain America mask that fits like a glove. So just there, you can hear the printers going in the background. <laughs> it's printing the back part of this. Um, you got these little things here, it's way too thin, and you can sort of, I don't know if you can see it, it's a bit moving around. <laughs> but therefore, um, which way do they go? Okay, so they go on like so and give some texture. So you can actually, it's good that they're separate so you can paint them. Um, and the good thing is, around here where it, it, it um, it's nice, really thin, it hasn't come out as smooth the rest of the helmet. It gets done now because it gets covered up. So all those sort of things you've got to take into account. So I'm going to cover it up with one of these. So I don't care that there's a little. Oh, you can barely see it, but there's a little. I've noticed that, that if, if anywhere there's layer lines, it's it's just there. But don't care because I'm covering up. So that's cool. Okay, so when I'm placing my parts, I always make sure I'm thinking where are the supports going to hit and what's facing out, what's facing no one will ever see okay so I always use tree support with slim slim tree support and then I'll place it and I'll place it down I'll then slice it and I'll have a look at where the tree supports are hitting and if they're not hitting some of these edges here I'll just go through and paint it on that's the good thing about orca slice you've got that little paintbrush you can just paint supports on and I just sometimes put them right on this edge not on this edge where it joins up but on this edge here and I'll put it all the way around and I'll always place it down so all the supports are on the inside of the helmet. Because let's be honest, the amount of support you're, um, you're saving by reorientating it is very minimal. Um, if you value your time, I value my time greatly. Um, so I put a value on my time, the amount of sandpaper, the amount of extra primer you have to do to try and sand it out. So have a look on the outside there. So I have to get rid of that as opposed to try and get rid of something like 
that on the inside there which is all really rough and horrid yeah so that's going to take a hell of a lot more effort than trying to just get rid of those layer lines there which you can barely see okay so um, I know frankly Bill I've been watching a few of his things and he's um, he does a lot of Iron Man stuff and he prints a lot of his helmets like that with the supports on the outside I'm not he's obviously done it that way because he's found that the best way for him I hate doing it that way I always do it this way with the supports coming up inside and I found I get nice smooth support with the face I'm always making sure that it's facing down like so and all the supports are coming up on the inside never on the outside and you get nice clean prints like so you can see the blue tack that I've been using to hold it, hold it together um, with the chin bit think about I think when it default goes in it goes in like so because you've got more points touching I flip it back over this way so all the supports are coming up hitting the bottom of it and it's roughing up the bottom bit so when I'm putting it together you've got the uh, yeah, now the blue tacks come off okay so you've got the face mask coming up next to the jaw like so so you want that as smooth as possible where it meets and then you've got <laughs> everything's falling on the floor um, you've got the eye bits fit in the sockets there like so okay so I will print so the eyes go down like that so when they go on anything that's crap will be hidden inside And all the bits that have to join up and it will be showing are all the bits I don't want supports on. And you get a nice smooth looking mask like so. All I gotta do now is figure out how to paint properly. <laughs> That's my biggest problem. I get too impatient and I stuff up the painting all the time. But that's just me being an idiot. Okay guys, um I've got a, a uh, Ender 3 K Ender 3 V3 KE coming, so I'll be doing a review on that soon. I've also got a um, Falcon 10 watt scanner coming, uh, apparently the Pro Edition, which also is just newly released, so I'll be doing a review on that. And I've also got the Ferret scanner coming, so if anybody saw the, um, the um, Makers show they had on in the states last well, last couple of days i would have seen they use one to scan um sam sam prentice they use one to scan him um and it came out really good they printed it they scanned it and printed it on at the show so i, I don't know how much um editing they did it but they did on it but the amount of time it took them to get it out they wouldn't have done much editing on it and it came out pretty good so i'll be looking forward to getting that and doing a review on that as well so some exciting things coming so don't forget to subscribe and like <laughs> so you don't miss out on any of those things coming up. Okay guys, hope this helped and I'll see you next week. Bye. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate the support. You might like one of these or one of these <laughs> videos um, that I've made in the past. So feel free. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Having to meet up on it.